create, read, update, and delete are the basic operations that you want to do on a database. And you can also do that with SQLite in your Xamarin forms and .NET MAUI applications. Let's check out how to do that. First, let's have a quick look at what we're about to learn in this video. So here you can see an interface with a bunch of buttons we can add to the database, update, delete, get subscribed, get not subscribed. You will see what that's all about in a minute, but we can add here a new name. Um, it's you, it's you and you're subscribed, of course. So we can add that to the database. We can select it, we can update it. Uh, with it's you there we go and I can now update it and it updates here in the list and that goes down to the database but I can also select this one and select the lead or I can just get the subscribed ones get the not subscribed ones all these things that we're about to learn in this video let's go check it out <laughs> And here we are in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. On the left, you can see the project that I've been using for another video. So that is kind of like the getting started with SQLite in Xamarin Forms and .NET MAUI. So if you haven't watched that yet, I would highly recommend that you watch that first. Uh, but you know, if you already have a little bit of prior knowledge and you can probably follow along. So what I've implemented here is a very minimalistic UI. Um, I love my simplistic designs where we have this little entry box um, and a checkbox. Uh, well, it's not actually a box, our check round um, and a button to add it to the database. So actually let me add some stuff here. So let me add Gerald and this checkbox, it doesn't really say so, but that tells you if you're subscribed to my channel, yes or no. So maybe it's a good time to check if that actually is the case. So let me just check this one, um, Gerald, also Gerald who is not subscribed. Um, let me add some other one, dear viewer, um, who is of course subscribed, aren't you? So here we go. And let's add another one. Um, not subscribed, subscribed, Harry, there we go. Um, who is not subscribed. So now I have two who are subscribed two who are not subscribed. And I have a little entry here, right? So this is going into the database again, check the other video. And what I'm going to do now is show you more a little bit about how to do these CRUD actions. So create, read, update, delete, actually the create and read are already done as you can see here. So let's go over to our database CS. And um, I'm not going to go over to the initialization code for the database, I'm just going to go focus on the CRUD actions. So here you can see I can just say database table um, person and it will sort out like what table that is where are my people stored my persons um, and I'm going to return that in a list um, and I'm gonna, just going to get them all I'm going to return that to a list and for the same thing I'm going to save this person um, so you know I'm going to put a person in here and I'm going to insert async and because you know it, it knows kind of like what type you're going to put in here. It knows in which table where we have to specify it here. It knows in which table to put it here. And that's why we don't need to specify it for like the insert. It will sort that out for you automatically. Um, but of course we also need, or we need, we can do updates and delete if that's something that you want to do. Um, so first of all, actually let's just implement the database um, stuff right now so that we, you know, are building from the top back up. Um, so let me actually just um, add here public, task. Um, I'm not sure what this is going to return yet. So let's put in an int here. And let's do the update person async first. Um, now with as with everything, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, so, um, you know, I'm just going to show you this one thing. But if you have other requirements, please feel free to do so. Um, and what I'm going to say here is return um, database dot update. So we have update all and we can just put in a collection in here, which is pretty cool too. If you have like a list of records that you want to well, a list of objects technically that you want to put in here that you want to update, um, you can just provide that collection and it will update all of them. Or I can just update this one and it will update that one object. And it de indeed it, it returns an int here if you can see here. And that probably returns like the number of rows that are actually updated. So you can inspect that to see if the operation actually succeeded yes or no. And of course, like the object that you're putting in here has to have that primary key specified and probably has to have a value um, so that it knows which record to update in the database. Um, so and what we can do then is just put in here the person and that's it. Boom, we can just, you know, have that person with the updated stuff, um, you put it in this uh, method, and it will update automatically. So that was pretty easy. Now, let me just copy this one, which doesn't make a lot of sense, to be honest, but you know, um, I'm just a lazy developer. So we're going to name this delete person. And then I'm going to search for database dot 
uh, we probably have a delete. So delete, again, same thing, delete all. You can put in a collection, it will delete all of those. Or you can have just this one um, and we can say which um, object to delete. So again, I'm just gonna provide this with the person and I think this also returns the number of rows that are deleted. So again, you can implement some logic to see if this is zero or one uh, because we expect it to be one in this case, right? Um, and also this object has to have that primary key um, with a value so it knows which record to delete, right? So if we go back to our person here, I've done this in the previous video, I've added this primary key and auto increment to the ID field so that it knows like this is the unique identifier for this object and it auto increments each time when I do here back in the database, when I do an insert, it will see like, hey, the ID is not set yet. I will take the latest ID, do a plus one and put that in the database. So that is how this works. Now we have the update and the delete. Let's leave it at this. I will add a little bit to this um, later in the video to do a little bit more advanced stuff uh, to see, uh, show you how to do that. Uh, but for now, let's make this work first. So let's go to our main page.xaml and I have a collection view. Now, again, this is just, you know, a sample UI. There's better ways to do this, which are probably a little bit nicer for your user, but I'm just going to set this to um, actually select, whoops, select selection mode. There we go. And I'm going to set it to single. So now we can actually this by hot reload by saving this. Oh, it loses my um, records. That's interesting. Uh, I was hoping to, to see them here. For some reason, it doesn't pick that up in hot reload. It should show up whenever we restart the app. Um, and now I can select one of those in my collection view. And I can also do, so whenever a selection changed, I can also have this event handler. Whenever a selection is made in the collection view, I can do something with that. And if I now go to my main page, XAML CS, I will see that event right here. And what I'm gonna do is here add a person with last selection which is going to save like the last selected person in that list. Um, and then I'm going to say last selection is E dot current selection. And you will see that this is, you'll get a little bit of free um, collection view tutorial here. The current collection is a read only list. Um, and this is a list because the selection mode can also be multiple. So you can have multiple, but in this case, I set it to single so I can just get the one item from here as person. So cast it to the right one. Um, and then we have that in our last selection. So that is the thing that I want to do. And now that we have it in this last selection thing here, I can add back in the example, I can add a new button. Actually, let's add two, um, one, two, here we go. So I'm going to say update database. Um, it's not correctly, entirely correct update database. It's going to be update record, but you know what I mean. And I'm going to say delete, delete. There we go. Delete ah, without typos. And let me implement some new handlers here. So I'm going to generate these. Um, just remove the name and then IntelliSense will add some new handlers for me. So we should have that as well. And probably back in the backing code right here, what I also want to do is then say, um, if I want to do the update, it might make sense to set the name entry dot text is last selection dot name and subscribed dot is checked is last selection dot oops subscribe not checked there we go so now we have this because I already have this entry and this checkbox right they have names so that's why I can um, reference them here, set the text, set the is checked, and then I can change the values and I can click that update button and it will update the value. So we've added a bunch of code. So let me quickly stop and restart this application. So all our changes are coming in and the records that I um, put in there should come back up as well so that I actually have some data to work with. So our app is coming back up. And here we go, our records are showing. Um, let me add actually a new one. So new record. There we go, add to database. And you can see I can select them now, right? And it selects the right um, values here as well. So let me select this new record and make this new record one. And I'm going to update the database. And actually I'm, I'm going to subscribe it as well, update. So there we go. You would see it doesn't update yet because I forgot to implement something in the UI here. Um, so let me actually just add that so I know it for the, the rest of the things. Actually, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh my gosh, this should go on the blooper reel. It doesn't do anything because I didn't implement the button yet. Um, okay, so <laughs> let me go back to this example page right here and we have this button update database and this is the button clicked. So the names are not really great here. So let me add a little um, comment here, update. 
And what I'm going to do here now is first check, you know, let's, it's sample code, but let's just do a little sanity check here. Um, in last selection, not is null, there we go. And we can then say um, app.database because in my, in my app, um, here, my app XAML CS, I have this static property database, so I can always access the database in a uh, easy way. Um, database, and I'm going to say update person async, and here I'm going to say last selection. Actually, probably what I want to do is set first last selection dot name because I'm not using any data binding here, so I want to um, set the right values here dot text, and last selection dot um, subscribed is subscribed dot is checked. So we're putting the new values into our um, person here. And then what I want to do is basically copy this little bit here. Again, this is not great. It's all sample code. This is not probably the way how you want to update your UI. You want to you probably use data binding and MVVM, that kind of stuff. I have some videos on that, so go check that out. If something is not clear, please let me know in the comments. I'll provide you with an answer and hopefully maybe even a video. Um, so this just you know refreshes the item source with getting all the new people from the database um, for our collection view. And this is a, uh, a sync call, so I need to use a sync here and then it's all good. Um, then I can actually also await this one. So let's do that. Now, this is then the delete, so let's just do that so I don't uh, make any more mistakes here. So let me copy this thing right here, see what makes sense. Um, also add the async here. And then I don't really need to refresh the values here because I'm just gonna delete it, so we don't need this. And then I'm gonna say delete person async, there we go. And I'm just gonna refresh so we see that it actually is removed. And I probably want to borrow some code from here and I want to make this uh, empty so that you know the values are gone as well. It's checked is false, so we go back to that. Okay, so let me stop and restart again. And now I actually implemented the code. So we should see something happening now. Uh, the app should be coming back up. This goes pretty fast. There we go. And now we have this new record and let's make this new record one and subscribe and then they say update and boom, you can see that it, um, it says new record one and is um, subscribed now. And if I click this again, and I remove this, I do update and you can see it changes back and just, you know, new um, update so you can see it, it updates all the time so that's great right and also if I would stop and restart this application it's persistent because it's in a local database um, now also what I can do is here um, click this one and I say delete so it's actually deleting and it's resetting this form right here so that is how you can do the delete operations so the create and the update um, the create and the read we already saw those actually um, so now you know all the crud operations that you can do let's take it a little bit further and um, just just to have a glance at like the more advanced stuff. Again, if you want to know more about that, please let me know in the comments. If you have any specific needs, I will try to answer it or maybe make a video about that. Uh, because what you can also do if you go back to our database file right here, um, we can also write our own query. So if you have like, you know, um, um, query, let's name this query async, here we go. If you have this like special need in your queries, um, of course, within the limits that are supported for SQL Lite, um, we can also do query async. So here we can just write our own queries. And we have to specify which type is coming back here. So I want to specify a person here and automatically um, we'll wrap that in a list because it's expecting uh, to have one or more results. So it's always returning this in a list basically. So what we also want to do here is probably return a list of person then. Um, and here you can then write um, just your SQL code. So I can just say select star from person because it will just have the table name of this, this object name that is here. Um, where subscribed is true. So we're going to get all the people that are subscribed, right? And I don't need this, um, this parameter right here. Of course, you can add the parameters in here. That's something that you can do with the queries as well. Um, so I can just do this and now I can query subscribe. Let's name it like that. There we go. And I can go back to my main page XAML CS. Um, actually, let's go to the main page.xaml first. Let's get a new button in here in my great design. And let's name this uh, button uh, get subscribed. There we go. 
Again, remove the clicked handler. Let's add a new one. There we go, new event handler. Button clicked to, that's the name that we're after. So let me add a little comment here, get subscribed. And what I can do now is um, basically set this item source right here. And, but this time I want to get the app database, get people, no, I want to query subscribed async. There we go, I need to make this um, async. And so this will get me only the subscribed one. So this should get me two, I have four, so um, it should get me two results right here. But before we do, let me add another one for you. So of course, if you've been working with this longer than, than you know, a little bit um, with like .NET and that kind of stuff, you also know link, L-I-N-Q, um, which allows you to write queries basically in C Sharp code, right? So that's pr pretty cool as well. And you can definitely use that with this SQL Lite local database as well. So uh, what we're gonna do here is say link link not subscribed and what we can do now is not well actually well we don't do query uh, we're gonna just table it's just table person here we go so we're gonna get the whole table and on that we're gonna say you know you can do all these things order by you can skip you can take if you have some paging scenario in there um, you can do where so where is actually the thing that we're after and then in some lambda expression we're gonna put in this P which is actually the person and then we can query through this parameter so we're subscribed is um, false because we didn't we wanted to have the not subscribed right and we want to still return this list because this is going to return a uh, what is it async table query uh, because it's only going to execute whenever you return this to a list right if you want to know anything about link um, please check the documentation on that so what i need to do here is to list async there we go and now it's going to you know execute this as a query it will probably rewrite it to something like this uh, but now it's you know an all strongly typed c sharp code which is probably more familiar to you so that's really cool so then we have that and we can add another main page example so yes i will add yet another button here we go um, and get not subscribed let's generate a new event handler right here um, button click three who would have thought and there we go, get not subscribed, subscribed. And we're just gonna get this same thing in here, collection view that item source is um, link not subscribed, there we go. And let's make that async, so it all works. Okay, so bunch of new changes, let's stop and restart. And now we will just see, it, it will just work. Um, so, you know, that's always the boring thing about demos. It's much more fun if it's not working, right? But now we have a bunch of buttons and I can just say get subscribed and it will only show me the subscribed one through this string query that I got here in my database CS. Um, and I can get the not subscribed, which is going through this link query that I got right here. And that is how you implement the CRUD operations with SQLite, Xamarin Forms, or your .NET MAUI application, because this also works for .NET MAUI. I hope this makes clear to you how to work with the CRUD operations in SQLite for your Xamarin Forms and .NET MAUI application. Um, as I noticed under my previous video is that there is a lot of questions surrounding these local databases with SQLite. So please keep those questions coming down in the comments. Um, I will try to answer them and hopefully make a video here and there, but there are so many comments, I can not make videos in the rate that the comments are coming in, um, although I would love to. But let me know in the comments what you think. And of course, as always, please like this video if you've actually liked it subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and i'll be seeing you for my next video keep coding